your plan. Drink up. Five minutes to closing time. Well, let's have three more. Come on now. Five minutes. Drink up your beer. Five minutes to closing time. Five minutes. Closing time. Hello, sweetheart. Yes, for the tune, eh? That's what you are. <laughs> yeah, you have a bad matey? Let's have a look at it. Blimey. Hey, what can I get you, lad? Mother's ruin. Make mine the same. It'll cost you two bob for the broken glass, matey. What's the idea anyway, letting a beast like that fly around loose in the public house? He didn't ought to let him smell the blood. He's very fond of blood. Charlie is. Mm, comes by his taste natural, if you ask me. Nobody's asking you, miss. Oh. Where's he from? Musgrave Manor. What is this Musgrave Manor? A blinking prison? That ain't the worst it's been called. Not that I'm one to go about spreading stories. <laughs> but we knows what we knows. Don't we, Charlie? Blimey. Where is this Musgrave Manor? Down the road a piece. You'll see it when you pass the old iron gates. Only don't loiter. You won't be welcome. Not by the Musgraves. Been sitting there. Lords of the manor ever since time was. If those old walls could speak, they'd tell you things that raise the air on your head. There's folks hereabouts swear they've seen corpse lights round the old greenhouse. And heard a wailing like lost souls in the lime walk. Here, I want no part of it. Nor of the Musgraves, neither. Hard men, like them as was before them. Cruel men. God pity them. For the day is coming when they'll need pity. I don't think you're being quite fair, Geoffrey. I assure you, I have no wish to be fair. Hmm. An excellent specimen of the Copris Carolina. You are a sweet old soul, aren't you? I have no wish to be a sweet old soul. No wish to be anything but what I am. A disagreeable person who does not intend to let his sister run off with the first cocksure Yankee who makes her pulses jump. And I suppose Philip feels the same way about it. Well, Philip has no choice in the matter. As my younger brother, Philip feels precisely as I tell him to. Eve's dropping again, Branton? Oh, no, Mr. Philip, I assure you. But I didn't wish to disturb him. What did you hear, Branton? Your brother and Miss Sally were going at it Emma and Tongs, about Captain Vickery, I mean. Really? Mr. Jeffrey and Captain Vickery had an horrible row this afternoon over Miss Sally. I thought they were coming to blows. Indeed, I did. Quiet. That'll do now, Brunton. If I catch you snooping again, I shall ask my brother to give you notice. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. You're not above a bit of snooping yourself, are you, Philip? Not in the least, old boy. Oh, there you are. I've been ringing for you. Sorry, Dr. Watson. I was in the upper region. The library's in a filthy mess. The wind came swishing down the chimney and scattered the ashes everywhere. Very well. I'll tidy it up at once, Doctor. Huh. Room full of smoke, papers all over the floor. Foul night, Brunton. It's customary, Nelson, sir. 
Just the sort of night I fancy for the ghost of Lady Clorinda. Oh, no, Dr. Watson. Lady Clorinda only walks in the West Wing. No one ever met a ghost in this part of the house. Oh, really? Isn't there some story that... Oh, they... there was an housemaid claimed that she saw Sir Jervis Musgrave with his head on backwards in this very room. Who oh, grieves me? Well, she was just a flighty girl, sir. Oh, sounds like it. Very flighty. A uh, most. Head on backwards. 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 Mr. Branson, does the wind always carry on like this here? Frequently, sir. It's a great pity. It makes the gentleman restless. More than usual, I mean. Well, our patients are all tucked up for the night now, eh, Branson? Are they? Of course, of course. Well, aren't they? Captain Vickery is in his room, sir. And it looked like Major Langford I saw going toward the pool. And I can't account for Lieutenant Clavering. Well, it's very odd. Uh, very odd, sir. Anything else, sir? No, thank you. Oh, yes, yes. You might tell Dr. Sexton that I'd like to see him for a minute, will you? Very good, sir. Good night, sir. Uh, good night, Brunton. Sorry. Awfully sorry. Skip. Get my bag, will you, Brunton? Yes, sir. Now, let's have a look. Yes, a near thing. Just missed the carotid artery. <laughs> Looks like a knife wound. Here you are, sir. Oh, it's, it's, it's like a nightmare. Give me some of that cotton wool in that little bottle, please. Awful nuisance. Oh, no, no, fellow. We'll have your patch up in no time. It'll be as good as new. What happened? I hardly know. It, it was in line walk just now. I was coming up from the village. I remember distinctly, I was approaching the greenhouse. The wind was terrific. I had to fight my way. I hadn't the slightest warning. All I know is that he struck and I went down. He must have thought I was done for. Any idea who it was? No. Well, that is, I... Yes, yes? Oh, really, I... I haven't any right. You have every right, Dr. Sexton. As head of this house, I shall arrange for an immediate investigation. Oh, I'd rather not, if you don't mind, sir. Dr. Sexton, the fact that my brother and sister and I have opened our home to convalescent patients doesn't relieve us of all responsibility for what occurs in it. I mean, under the peculiar circumstances. Oh, come along, Bob. There's, there's no need to shield anyone. Thirteen. Thirteen? That's curious. What's got into the old clock? Uh, nothing, nothing at all. Oh, sir, don't you remember the last time it did that? Your father was killed the next day. scientific experiment, Mrs. Hudson. Oh, frightening the witch out of honest people. Permit me, ma'am. Oh, dear. So now it's bullet holes in me plaster. 
Oh, Mr. Holmes, this is the last straw. The last straw, Mrs. Hudson. Mm. The one which breaks the back of the case against Jacob Dill. It, it proves beyond a shadow of doubt that even bound as he claims he was, he can still have fired the shot in his own defense that killed his wife's lover. But shooting holes in my beautiful plaster. Come in, Watson. My dear fellow, I'm glad to find you in. I didn't even knock. How do you know it was me? I. Uh, me is acceptable, Watson, unless, of course, you're a purist, which I doubt. And may I add that your step is like no other in London. You're just in time for breakfast. Good, I rather counted on that. Mrs. Hudson, dear, how are you? Oh, it's good to see you again, sir. I, I think there'll be enough there for two. Splendid. <laughs> you're a sight for sore eyes, Watson. Thanks, old boy, and so are you. Sit down. Good, thank you. All right, let's have it. What brings you from Northumberland at this early hour? A bad business, Holmes. A very bad business. How do you know that I came from Northumberland? Elementary, my dear Watson. Your overnight bag carried a fresh Euston label. The only train arriving at Euston Station at this hour is the Newcastle Express from Northumberland. Ergo, Sir Knight, thou comest from Northumberland. Of course. Obvious, isn't it? Quite. Now tell me, what dark deed was done at Hurston Towers last night? Well, that's what I came to see about, Holmes. About 10 o'clock last night, I was sitting in the lab. How do you know that I came from Hulse? You wrote me that you'd volunteered for medical service within the realm. With your experience, what post could have been offered you, other than to put you in charge of a home for convalescent officers? Only one such home has been opened in Northumberland in the last month, and that's Musgrave Manor at Hulston. <laughs> Simple reasoning. Child could do it. Not your child, Watson. No, of course. Well, I never had a child. I very nearly did, though. Did I ever tell you about that, that widow at Twickenham? A very narrow escape. I just found out in time she had a most horrible little squirt about three and a half. Yes, uh, Watson, I think we'd better stick to Hurston. Oh, sorry, old boy. Oh, Hurston? It's a grim old pile. Very no. spooky. Don't tell me that you met a ghost. No, not so spooky as that. Ghosts don't stab people in the neck, do they? Or do they? Not well-bred ghosts, Watson. Who was stabbed in the neck? My young assistant, Dr. Sexton. When? Last night. Any idea who did it? I have no idea. You reported it? No, well, no, no, I didn't. Why not? Well, the same as a... My dear fellow, what you're trying to say is, the officers in your care are all fine fellows. Wonderful war records and so on, is that it? Precisely. So you thought, perhaps, a private investigation? Exactly. Very right and proper thinking, Watson. We've just time to catch the 9.30 train for Hurston. But my dear fellows, no immediate hurry. Isn't there? Your patients are all victims of combat fatigue. Any one of them might go over the edge at any moment. And from what you've told me, there's a killer loose at Hurston. Great Scott, you may be right. Come on, Watson. We haven't a moment to lose. I only hope we shan't be too late. You were right, Watson, about Musgrave Manor. Houses like people have definite personalities, and this place is positively ghoulish. <laughs> Certainly is. Hello. What's that? Just the old greenhouse? No, oh. no, that pile of leaves. Just an ordinary pile of leaves. Why? Doesn't it strike you as odd, Watson, that a pile of leaves should be raked up in front of a greenhouse door? No gardener in the world would do that. Jeffrey Musgrave. Oh. That's all very interesting, Inspector Lestrade. But what, may I ask, does it prove? What I'm trying to prove is this. The Dr. Sexton here went down. He's twice now, Inspector. You were stunned. Naturally. You were out longer than you thought. That's the point. What point? Just this. The man who attacked him had time to get back into the house before Dr. Sexton here came to. Yes? Yes. And this here glove... Oh. And this here glove, what I picked up at the scene of the crime, belongs to a certain party right here in this house. I say. 
Why, that glove belongs to my brother. Huh? You suggest that he attempted to murder Dr. Sexton? Who knows? The man whose hand fits this here glove will bear talking to. Very well. My brother's down at the stables. I'll take you to him myself. Thank you. It's the quickest way to put a stop to this blithering nonsense. Come on. Oh, Mr. Philip. Yeah? Better not go out in the night air without a coat. Yeah, take mine. Thanks. And I won't need this. No. Oh, uh, nor this. Well, shall we go? Why, if it ain't Mr. Holmes. Good evening, Lestrade. Come to give us an hand, have you? Always happy to help, Inspector. Thanks, but I don't think I should be needing any. <laughs> Why, if it isn't Dr. Watson. Gentlemen, this is my friend, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. Mr. Philip Musgrave and Dr. Sexton. How do you do? How do you do? I've just brought him up to spend a few days with us. Well, that's very good of you. But as you see, Scotland Yard's already taken charge. Oh, really? That's most unfortunate. If you don't mind, Dr. Watson, I'd like to have that little talk with your brother, sir. I'm afraid you can't have that pleasure, Inspector. Oh, no? I've got bad news for you, Mr. Musgrave. We've just found your brother in the Lime Walk. He's dead. You can't mean it. No. Look here, Holmes, if this is one of your little jokes... Murder's no joke, Inspector. That's right, Mr. Holmes. No good saying it ain't. Murder? Well, let's get going. I'll take charge now. What? It's quite within my rights as a local justice of the peace. I'll come with you. Surgical instruments. You know, Watson, the instruments that save life are hardly more pleasant to look at than those that take it. Hmm. Grizzly thought, Holmes. You rang, Dr. Watson? Yes, Brunton. I want you to take some men and go down to the lime walk. Me, sir? Oh, I can't, sir. I'm sorry, but I simply can't. My stomach, you know. I really couldn't look at a corpse. Corpse? Well, I, uh... How did you know that there was a corpse? Obviously, he was listening at the door. I'll take care of the matter, Doctor. I was listening, too. Come along, Brunton. Remarkable woman. Housekeeper, I suppose. <laughs> She's very efficient. Same type as Mary Ann Carpenter, the trunk murderess. Extraordinary house. Yes, it's... Yes, indeed. Now, Watson, if you don't mind, I'd like to have a word with your extraordinary patients. Let me remind you, Holmes, that my patients are just, uh, just, uh, patients. Quite so. All normal men, sound in, in mind and body, no sign of psychoneurosis. I quite understand. Then, Holmes, even, even normal people are sometimes a little... Precisely. Hello, Mac. Eh? Uh, oh, 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 I, I must have taken a wee nap. But Mac, I want you to meet a very old friend of mine, Mr. Sherlock Holmes, Captain McIntosh. How do you do? I have heard of you, Mr. Holmes. Sorry to have wakened you. Oh, that's quite all right. See you later. Yes. Uh, Sit down, Mac, and go on with your sleep. Poor chap, he lay wounded in a trench on Joshua Hill. The German tanks went over him. Watson, huh? have you any idea how Jeffrey Musgrave met his death? Yes, depressed skull fracture. I want to hang it all, Holmes, it isn't. Isn't it? Why not? No edema, no bleeding, no contraction of tissue. Precisely. The blow on the head was delivered after death. Musgrave was killed by a sharp instrument thrust up between the base of the skull and the top vertebra. Great Scott. Should we go up now? Hello, Langford. Uh, hello there. Uh, uh, been away, haven't you? Haven't you? Yes, I've just been out of London. I brought my friend back. This is Mr. Sherlock Holmes, Major Langford. Uh, see you at dinner, what? What? I hope so. I hope so. Uh, I hope so. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me. 
poor chap was in Singapore. Escaped from a Japanese prison camp. Ghastly experience. He's suffering from uh, escape complex, obviously. Yes, he's a, he's a very nice chap, though. He's... The next fellow I want you to meet is young Clavering, Lieutenant Royal Engineers. Saw a lot of men blown to bits by Nazi booby traps. He's a bit on edge. Not unnaturally. Coming. Well, Dr. Watson, come in, won't you? Sorry to keep you so long. You see, I, uh, I was lying down, resting. This is my friend, Mr. Holmes, who's here for a few days. Mr. Clavering. Glad to meet you. How do you do? Sorry to disturb you. Not at all. I say, you don't have to have some cigarettes about you, do you? That's one of the reasons I came. I brought you some of those American cigarettes that you're so fond of. That's all right. Open it up. <laughs> no hurry. No hurry at all. No, no, no. Of course there isn't. Shall we go? Yes, well, we must be off. We've got a lot to do. See you later. Yes, I'll be back. Good night. He seemed afraid there might be a bomb in that package. Well, he's found him in less likely places than that, poor chap. <laughs> the man in this room is American flying officer, Captain Victory. Nothing very much the matter with him. What's he here for, then? A spot of rest. Had a pretty long go of it, worn out. Needs all the rest he can get. Vicar? Vicar here? This one seemed to be him. No one at home. Hmm. Down to not. Not since tea time, at any rate. Well, what's this? Captain Vickery, here's your tea. If it's cold, don't blame me. That sounds like Brunton's work. The butler? He fancies himself a poet, but only when he's drinking. I see. Wasn't there an American killer given to verse? Holmes, you don't think that Brunton... Excuse me. I merely stated there was an American killer given to verse. Dr. Watson, oh, where are you? Oh, there you are. Steady, my dear, steady. Please make me wake up, won't you? It's just a bad dream, I know. Jeff and Pat... No, 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 my dear, you've got to get a grip on yourself. Come on, come, come sit down. My brother Jeff, murdered. Poor old Jeff. And I hadn't spoken to him since we had the fight yesterday on Pat, I mean, Captain Vickery's account. And now he's dead. No, no, my dear, you must, you must pull yourself together. But you don't understand. They're trying to say that Pat... They're trying to prove that Pat killed Jeff. No, no, no. Yes! Funny, isn't it? Awfully funny. Awfully funny. Awfully funny. Stop it! Who are you? My name is Holmes. Sherlock Holmes? Yes. Then you'll help us, won't you, Mr. Holmes? Pat and me. I'll try to. Now, tell me, wasn't there bad blood between your brother Geoffrey and Captain Vickery? That's got nothing to do with it. It may have everything to do with it. If you think Captain Vickery ever murdered anyone, you're no more of a detective than... than... than Dr. Watson. Oh, dear. Oh, I'm sorry. You're very much in love, aren't you? I'm out of my mind, Mr. Holmes. I'm out of my mind. Oh, please forgive me and please... Please help me. Of course, of course, I understand. But you don't understand that appalling man from Scotland Yard is questioning Pat at this very moment. Now, this here rake, it's the identical one you got from the gardener this afternoon, now, ain't it? Smells like it. Hey, what is this? Are you trying to prove that Jeffrey Musgrave was killed with a rake? No, I'm trying to... Never mind what I'm trying to prove. Just incriminate yourself, Captain Vickery. That's all the Stroud wants. I'll thank you to keep out of this, Mr. Holmes. This is Mr. Sherlock Holmes. How do you do? He's do promised do? to help you, dear, and there's nothing to worry about now. Only his neck, miss. Now, this here rake, what did you say you were using it for? I told you, I got it to fish my cap out of the pond. It blew in. Oh, so you were using it down at the pond, were you? For the tenth time, yes. And how did it happen to turn up alongside Musgrave's body, eh? I don't know. Uh-huh. Well, that's that. Oh, Mr. Holmes. Any fingerprints on the rake, Inspector? No, Mr. Holmes, that's the point. If Vickery was only using it to fish his hat out, well, no, he wouldn't bother to wipe his fingerprints off, now would he? It's beyond imagination, I suppose, that somebody else could have used the rake and wiped off both sets of fingerprints. Highly interested, but very unlikely. Now, you admit that you had a regular set too with Geoffrey Musgrave yesterday, didn't you? You threatened to bash his head in. I merely made the offer. He didn't accept it. Who told you so? He did. Oh, uh, no, he did. I only stated what I heard. Captain Vickery did threaten my brother. That's right, Mr. Holmes, and it's no good saying it ain't. This Yankee lad had motive and opportunity. 
and the rake ties him right up tight to the corpse. All right. Come along. Do you really think he killed old Musgrave? You know very well he didn't. He doesn't. Stop clicking those needles. Oh, Pat. Take it easy, Sally. Now, look, don't worry a bit. I'll tell you where everything's going to be all right. Let's go, Inspector. Mr. Holmes. Steady, steady. Uh, aren't you on our side? Yes, Sally. Then why don't you do something? Because Captain Vickery will be much safer in the local police station tonight than he would be in this house. Oh, Mr. Holmes, what am I going to do? Watson, what get a sedative. What am I going to do? I'll get it at once. Come along, Sally. She's a bit upset, but she'll get over it. You think so? She'll have to. She's got an ordeal ahead of her. She has to go through that tiresome ritual tomorrow. Ritual? This is no family ceremony, Mr. Holmes. Sally's next in line now that I'm head of the household. Blast this thing. Miss Help? Oh, yes, thanks. Knitting needle, isn't it? Yes. Handy little things. This is my heir. Sally has to recite a sort of formula over Jeff's body in front of the fireplace in the library in the presence of the entire household. Well, that's better. Just what sort of formula? Oh, it's not meaningless words. Musgrave ritual, they call it. It's an old family custom has been handed down for generations. You remember the words? No, no, not at all. But you had to speak them when your brother Geoffrey took over. Yes, if that's right, I did. Let me see now. Who first shall find it were better dead, who next shall find it perils his head. The last to find it defies dark powers. Who first shall find it were better dead, who next shall find it perils his head. The last to find it defies dark powers and brings good fortune to Hurlstone Towers. Where was the light on the face of the messenger? Where did he speed? To guard the Queen's page. What foeman advanced? The bishop's page, rashly. And who to repel? The king's cautious page. What then the... Disaster. Queen slaughters page no no sorry miss sally page slaughters page thank you branton who came then to slay him the bloodthirsty bishop where shall he go deep down below Away from the thunder, let him dig under. Once more into the breach, dear friends, once more. Happy day. Drunken sot. The master's been ringing you for the past ten minutes. Why don't you answer it? Fly away, little gremlin. You're the one who'll fly away if he ever catches you in this state. Oh, my son, that's him. Hurry, hurry. Coming, sir. Coming. One moment, sir. Mr. Holmes, come in, sir, come in. This is indeed an honor. I don't often have visitors. What can I do for you, sir? Might stop that squeaking to begin with. Yes, sir. 
And perhaps you can tell me how you come to know the Musgrave ritual by heart. Me, sir? Yes, you. When Miss Sally forgot the lines today, you were the one who prompted her. Well, sir, I memorized it. Obviously. But why? Because it has no meaning. I love things that have no meaning. Thank you, Brunton. But supposing it did have a meaning, and suppose that meaning were tied up with the murder of Geoffrey Musgrave. Oh, what a lovely idea. If I may say so. You may, Brunton. Uh, you may also sit down. Thank you, sir. Oh, stop it! And look at me. No, here. You know the meaning of the Musgrave ritual. Do I? Well, don't you? You'd be surprised at all the things I know. What things? No, you don't. About the Musgraves? They'd be telling. But here's to them anyway. All the Musgraves, past and present. Some of them were murderers, and some of them worse. But they all knew how to keep a secret. And so do I. But. I've been ringing for you for the past ten minutes. Sorry, sir, but the buzzer doesn't buzz. That'll do, Brunton. You have your notice, do you understand? Yes, sir. Is that advisable, Mr. Musgrave? Let me be the judge of that. He leaves Helston in the morning. The morning's a long way off. Farewell. A long farewell to all my greatness. You've done it now, Alf Brunton. After all we've been through. How could my manage to do it all alone? What are you going to do? What am I going to do? Thirteen again. Yes. So gently, sweet Afton, among thy green days. So gently, I'll sing thee. Mr. Howell's attitude confuses me, Watson. She swears that she hasn't set eyes on Brunson since last night, and yet she seems completely unwilling to help us find him. Quite so. She knows where he is as well as we do. I mean, as well as we don't. I wonder. You said that he was drinking last night. Wouldn't it be a good idea to try the pub? That's exactly where we're headed for, Watson. I'm glad we thought of this. Even if we don't find Brunson. I was afraid we shouldn't find him here. Don't worry, old boy. I can do with a drink. Your information, so could I. Gentlemen. Uh, hello, Doctor. Uh, not looking for us, are you? <coughs> are you? Well, no. As a matter of fact, we're looking for... Brunton. You haven't seen him, have you? Uh, have we, Clavering? Uh, have we? Why should we? Morning, Gracie. Morning, Doctor. What do you have? A bottle of bass and what's yours? A pint of bitter, please. And a pint of bitter. I'm a cattle. I'm a cattle. Oh, really? Hello, a tame raven. You're a devil, are you? A kettle, are you? I'm a devil. Birds of prey, aren't they? Yes, in a way, scavengers, rather. They can smell a carcass half a mile off. Yeah, that they can and all. You should see Charlie here when there's a tasty bit outside in the street. <laughs> shall we go sit down? Seen Dr. Watson. He's over there, lass. Thank you. May I 
I speak to you a moment, Mr. Holmes? What's wrong, Sally? We can't find my brother, Philip. Did you look at his room? That's the trouble. We had to force the door. It was locked on the inside. Really? Yes. Oh, you must come, Mr. Holmes. Certainly, Sally, at once. Do be quick. Something ghastly has happened. I know it. Oh, that dreadful bird. Please drive it away. Watson. Uh, take it away. Where were you? Anywhere. Into the pot. Just take it away. Philip Musgrave. What are they doing now? Do, doing now? I don't know. They stopped talking. Somebody's walking about in the upper hall. Heavy footsteps. There's no doubt about it, Watson. Philip Musgrave had a visitor here last night. These footprints were made either by a very heavy man or a man carrying a very heavy burden. That's right, Mr. Holmes. It's no good saying it ain't. The burden was Philip Musgrave's body, and these here footprints were made by Alfred Brunton. It doesn't necessarily follow. Oh, don't it? Here, try that on your footprint. And that's Alfred Brunton's shoe. That's perfectly, Inspector. Uh -huh. But the fact that these prints were made by Brunton's shoes doesn't prove that Brunton's feet were in them. Why not? Where should Brunton's feet be if not in his own shoe? Well, they're not in them now, are they? Look here, Holmes. Let's use our intellect. You what? What's wrong with that? Let's stick to motive. That's my strong point. Now, this here Brunton had motive. Philip Musgrave gave him the sack, didn't he? Did Geoffrey Musgrave also give him the sack? What's that got to do with it? Everything. The similarity of method in both murders shows they were the work of one man. Well, that, that's figure out. He was in jail at the time of this murder. All right, murder. Watson, all right. Then Alfred Brunton's our man, just what I said. What possible motive could Brunton have had for the murder of Geoffrey Musgrave? Motive? Oh, bother motive. Who cares about motive? This case is as simple as ABC. Is it? Then perhaps you could explain to us why these footprints lead up to a blank wall and never return. What? You didn't think of that, did you, Inspector? There's just one possible explanation. I got it. Brunton murdered Musgrave right up against the wall. He hoisted the body over his shoulder, like this, you see, walks backwards, clean out of the room. That's a very undignified position, Lestrade. Up to date, is it? In a house as old as this, it's not unusual to find secret passageways that lead down through the walls. Hello, here we are. No, you don't. Come out of there. What are you doing in there? None of your business. Answer me. Obviously, she was looking for Brunton. That's right. He hasn't left Musgrave Manor. I'm certain of that, sir. His clothes are still hanging in the wardrobe. Don't you lie to me, woman. You've got him in there somewhere. Don't go in there. Why not? You'll get lost. Uh, me lost? Oh, I like that. He will get lost, sir. Let him. Now listen to me. Where did you enter that passageway? Through the old greenhouse in Limewalk, sir. Did Brunton know that? No, he didn't. Mrs. Brunton. Then why were you looking for him in there? We... I... Yes, we've known all along that you were married to Brunton. You know Philip Musgrave was murdered, don't you? No. Yes, you do, and you think Brunton did it? No. You think he carried him down through the greenhouse? No, no. Over to the garage? No, he never. And crammed his body in the rumpled seat of that roadster? Don't you try and put the blame on Alf. I'll put the blame on both of you. You're in this together. You were in his room last night. I saw you there. Only to talk about the ritual, sir. He... We... he thought that he got it all worked out. Did he leave any notes, any record? No. That is... Oh, come on, come on, out with it. Only this, sir. I found it this morning under the soap dish on his washstand. Hmm. Hastily written. Another jingle? Yes. Obviously in some agitation. If any harm should come to me, fleshly or spiritual, seek and you will find the key in the Musgrave ritual. The old ritual, there it is again. Watson, we've got to find that ritual. It's the key to the whole business. Just a minute. You can't talk to Sally. Why not? She was in such a state, I had to give her a hypo. All right, come on. Draw the curtains, Watson. There must be a copy of that ritual somewhere in this room. She had to learn it, you know. Yes, you're right. Here it is. I doubt it. Empty. Quite. There's only one thing to do. Search the room. Not the room, Watson. Her mind. We must search her mind. Obviously, she took great pains to hide that paper. But, but why should she hide it? 
Put yourself in her place. Her brother Jeffrey was murdered. The man she loves is accused of that murder and thrown into jail. On top of that, she finds her brother Philip murdered. What would your reactions be? Well, naturally, I should be terribly upset. Obviously. Excuse me. She's brought back to this house in a state bordering on hysteria. She comes through that door, goes to that desk, throws down her gloves. The first thing her eye lights on is the Musgrave ritual. In her mind, it's tied up with all the disasters that have befallen Hurston. She herself may be the next victim. She must hide that paper. Well, quite right, but, but, but where? Excuse me, sir. Was she alone in this room at any time before you gave her the hypo? Certainly not. Nora was here. She helped him to bed while I went for my bag. Good. Nora? Yes, sir? When you were alone with Miss Sally, what was the first thing she did? Well, sir, she asked me to turn down her bed and lay out her nightdress. And what was she doing in the meantime? Let me think, sir. Oh, yes, she went over to her desk. Mm -hmm. That was when she took the ritual from this envelope. What then, Nora? Then she asked me to step over and draw the curtains. Why, oh, someone's pulled them open. Yes, I know. When you drew the curtains, you turned your back on her? Sure, and it wasn't more than two shakes of the lamb's tail. Long enough. When you were at the window, where was she? She was sitting over here. Sitting right here, taking off her stockings. Oh, but she never left the chair. I kissed the book on it. I've got it. She must have tucked that paper under this cushion. Oh. Well, she changed her mind. Obviously. Well, she, well, she could have hidden it anywhere here. What time is it when you brought her in here, Watson? From the fence out here. The clock was striking the quarter hour when I came in, sir. I definitely heard it. This clock? The same, sir. Thank you, Nora. You may go. Obviously, this clock was running at 12.15. Just as obviously, it stopped at 12.20. Huh? When Nora turned her back, Sally reached across, opened the clock, and hid the ritual in here. <laughs> Amazing, Holmes. Elementary, my dear Watson. Where fell the light on the face of the messenger. Where did he speed? Guard the Queen's page. Gibberish, that's what it is. Hokey pokey, penny alarm. Thing like this, Watson, that's been handed down for centuries, can't be mere gibberish. Who had entered the lists? The King's pale knight. Pale poppycock. I say, Watson. King, Queen, knight, bishop. Sounds like a game of chess to me. Precisely. Where fell the light? The light, Watson. Follow the light. On the face of the messenger. Look at it, Watson. Look at it. Like a giant chessboard. This is no gibberish. These are chess terms, and that's the chessboard. The secret of the Musgrave murders is locked up in that floor. And by Jove, we've got the key to it. Who had entered the lists? The King's Pale Knight. White King's Knight to White King's Bishop Three. Your move, Dr. Sexton. I really know nothing about the game. Come on, Bob, it's great fun. You start from over here. Uh, here, uh, I'll show you. Uh, I'll show you. One, two, three, one. Page into Black King Three. Your move, Clavering, into Black King Three, please, over there. There's not to reason why. Page slaughters page. Your move, Watson. I take you, my dear. <laughs> it's a good game, isn't it? <laughs> stop it, stop it. You mustn't giggle. It's be serious. Your move, Clavering. You take Dr. Watson. Too bad, Doctor. Who came then to slay him? The bloodthirsty bishop. White Queen's bishop, White King's knight five. That's my move. One, two. I say, Doctor, you moved, didn't you? Did I? I don't think so. Yes, I'm afraid you did. Well, where, where was I? Um, King Bishop Three? That's right. Oh, yes, of course. So sorry. 
three, four, five. Captain, it looks bad for you. Aye, but uh, where shall I go? Where shall he go? Deep down below. Mrs. Howells, what's underneath this floor? Uh, well, um, it's only an old cellar, sir. The entrance goes down behind that stair, but it's been locked up for centuries. One of the old Musgraves murdered his own brother down there. Shh, listen. Hello, what's that? It's Brunton. Alf, Alf, he's in that passageway over the fireplace. Are you there, Brunton? Get me out. It's me, Lestrade. I'm lost. I'm all turned around. You have been for years. Get him out of there, will you, Mrs. House, and give him a saucer of milk. Come here, Jenny. Stand on the square for me. And stamp on it. Keep stamping. Clavering, get your sound detector. Gentlemen, deep down below. There's no been a soul here in a couple of hundred years. Someone's been here. And in the last 24 hours. Yeah, clean as a new pin. Precisely. The dust of 200 years is on the walls. The floor's been swept clean. Obviously in an attempt to remove footprints. Shh. Listen. That's Jenny in the hall upstairs. Clavering. Let me have your sound detector. So sorry. You must find the exact spot under that square I marked in the hall. Don't move, anyone. Someone's moving about, interfering with what I'm trying to do. Stand perfectly still, everybody. But lend me a hand. Of course. Here, uh, I'll take that. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, it's all right. I've got all the things I have. Hello. Gracious me. Here lies the body of Ralph Musgrave, knight, lord of the manors of Holston. This place used to be known as Holston Towers. Netherfield and King's Hargrave, Anno Domini, 1539. What we're looking for is underneath here. That's what the ritual meant by deep down below. It's a burial crypt. Up with it. I say, there's somebody down there. Who is it? This is Brunton. Is it Brunton? I don't know. Stay where you are. By the grace of God, King of Great Britain, France and Ireland, defender of the faith. What have you found? Uh, any clue? Any clue? Uh, no. Uh, just an old document. Hello. 
What's this? Looks like some sort of writing. Watson! Coming. Hold this for me, will you? Steady. There, on the floor by his right hand. See those marks in the dust? Like pin scratches made with his fingernail. Yes. Yes. See that stuff under his nail? He's trying to write something. By Jove! He did write something. What is it? Aye, tell us, man. What did he write? I can't make it out. It's too faint. Here, I've got good eyes. Let me. Let me. Stay me a while, all of you. These marks must not be erased. What are you going to do, Holmes? I'm going to leave this just as it is until I can get the proper chemicals to bring out the words. Have you no notion of what he tried to write? Yes, I have. I think that Bunton, with his last strength, wrote the name of his murderer on that floor in his own blood. I should get into Newcastle, pick up my chemicals, and be back here not later than noon tomorrow. Oh, yes, Mr. Holmes. Meanwhile, you all have your work cut out for you. Watson. Yes? You'll guard this door with your life. Of course, sir. With my what? I said with your life. Anything you say, Holmes? There's no entrance to this cellar except through that doorway. But, Holmes, uh, what I feel about... Oh. Brunton's murder is in this house. He's bound to make one last effort to get down there to erase those marks, naturally. The Strad's men are posted outside, and they'll see to it that nobody leaves this house. Concentration camp. My men have orders to shoot, if necessary. I'll be outside myself, keep you watch. Sexton, your post will be at Miss Sally's door. And remember, she's in more danger than anyone here. Don't worry, I'll look after her, Mr. Holmes. Good night. Good night, Holmes. Good night. Good luck. Uh, oh, Dr. Watson, if you want any help, sing out. I don't mind saying I'd feel a lot safer if I had a gun on me. <laughs> I always keep mine ready. Good night, Bob. Keep awake, old man. I will. <laughs> That's funny. Striking twelve again. all this monkey business. I didn't lock you in. Well, doors don't lock themselves. They do in this house. What are you doing down here, anyway? I'm worried just about Langford. Langford? Yes, he's got into his head that this is a Jap prison camp. He's got that filthy rope, and he's bound and determined to go out the window. He can't do that. The Stroud's men will shoot him. He may be out already. I'll head him off. Then again, he may not be. Perhaps you're right. Let me go. No, no, no. You'll be shot. I'll go. No, you'll be shot. Oh, really? Let's both go. 
I can't leave here. You stay where you are. I'll go and call Lestrade. Remember, Clavering, stay where you are. Here! Look here, Constable. I'm Dr. Watson. Are you now? Well, I'm Mrs. Miniver. Come along to the inspector. Gross and pertinent. as I assure you. There's nothing written on the floor. It was just a ruse of mine to bring Brunton's murderer here. Permit me. As the most ruthless killer in England, you deserve some of the light. Killer? I? Oh, I say, you seem to forget that my life was also attempted. And a very neat trick it was to divert suspicion from yourself. But it struck me as odd that the man who murdered both Musgraves with such a sure hand should have missed so badly in your case. Unless, of course, uh, you yourself were the murderer. Oh, that's ridiculous. Then, too, it seemed curious that you, a doctor, examined both bodies and failed to report the real cause of death. And that was? A cisternal needle thrust up into the brain between the base of the skull and the first cervical vertebra. I had the unpleasant duty of removing this piece of needle from Philip Musgrave's head. It couldn't be yours by any chance, could it? I never owned one. Oh, yes, you did. I saw it in your case. The night I came into this house. Just after Geoffrey Musgrave was found murdered. It wasn't broken then. It was only when you killed Philip Musgrave that you lost a piece of it. Oh, nonsense. Why should I go around sticking needles into people? A fair enough question, Doctor. Among nice people, murder, like matrimony, generally has a motive. And in this case, the motive was matrimony. Oh, you mean Miss Sally? I do. Oh, I see. So you think it's a case of murder for profit, do you? Precisely. <laughs> My dear Holmes, that won't do. The Musgraves are land poor. Everybody knows that. Exactly. But everybody didn't know what you knew. You worked out the meaning of the Musgrave ritual. I have? Oh, <laughs> yes. You have. You claimed you knew nothing about the game of chess. When I suggested you'd moved off your proper square, you promptly named King's Bishop Three, and what's more, moved back onto it. Oh, nonsense. Why should I have stepped out of my square in the first Break place? Break up my move, spoil my game, and prevent me from finding what you had already found. And that was? The old land grant I took from this box, which would have made Sally Musgrave upon the death of her brothers, the richest woman in England. Well, what's that? Don't tell me you found another needle. No, no. Just a button. Wouldn't be yours, would it? Mine? Give it to me. Thank you. Would you mind telling me why you think I was down here with Brunton? No, not at all. As I see it, you killed Philip Musgrave in his own room, carried his body down through the secret passageway, out through the greenhouse, into the garage, where you crammed it into the rumble seat of that roadster. But unfortunately for you, you had a witness. Brunton was there, sleeping off his drunk, nursing a grudge against Philip Musgrave. Brunton became your accessory. But you didn't want an accessory, so you lured him down here with the promise to share the Musgrave treasure with him and uh, exit Brunton. Very ingenious, Mr. Holmes. You seem to have everything, except perhaps the negligible item of proof. Suppose we leave that to the jury. Suppose we do. Shall we go? After you. Oh, by the way, uh, don't forget your torch. Oh, thanks. I don't suppose it occurred to you that you were taking a bit of a chance coming down here all alone with a suspected murderer. 
One has to take chances in my profession, Doctor. You see, I couldn't possibly risk sharing my little plot with anybody. Not even with Dr. Watson? No, particularly not with Dr. Watson. If he'd known what was up tonight, he'd have been so elaborately mysterious, he'd have given the whole show away. As a matter of fact, I had the devil's own time luring him away from that door upstairs, so that uh, we could be alone. That's all I wanted to know. Stay where you are. I'm afraid I have no choice, Dr. Sexton. Look here. You're not really going to kill me, are you? They'll hear you. Who will? That was a bad slip you made, letting me know you were so completely alone. And you're really going to kill me. I'm afraid I have no choice, Mr. Holmes. But as you said, I've no evidence against you. No proof, no proof at all. You forget the needle and the button. Bring them here, please. Not too close. Now put them in my pocket. Thank you. Curious about that button. It is off my coat, of course. Can't think how I never missed it. Poor old Brunton. He didn't struggle much. Now, Phil Musgrave was different. The needle broke off and I didn't have time to probe for it. But you've got both of them now. The button and the needle. Why kill me? Now, step back. Just a bit. Against the wall. Now, if you stand perfectly still, I think I can manage this with one shot. Confession, Watson? Every word, Holmes. And I heard all the rest, sir. Good. Let me congratulate you on an extraordinary catch. That's right, Mr. Holmes. It's no good saying it ain't. I'm afraid I underestimated you, Holmes. Pity. Yes. Those blank cartridges were a cheap sort of trick, I grant you. But it wasn't easy to let you take my gun away from me without seeming to hand it to you. That's why I let you take the torch first. I knew you'd snap it off. Yes, we told you we were taking an awful risk. Well, we had to have a confession. And these egomaniacs are always so much more chatty when they feel they have the upper hand. Shall we go? I can't make head nor tail of it. Can you, Pat? Well, it looks like an old land grant. It's really a crown grant. What I don't understand is why the Musgraves didn't claim the land ages ago. Obviously, Watson, one of them died before passing on the meaning of the ritual to his heir. The words remained, but the sense was lost. I wonder why he left the grant down there where he found it. What good would it have done him? So long as your brothers lived, once they were out of the way and you came into the property, he expected to marry you. I like that. Whatever made him he think... He thought himself irresistible. Precisely. It's not unheard of in cases of egomania. I suppose then he meant to rediscover the Crown Grant. At the proper time, yes. And then enjoy his wife's millions. Did you say millions? I did. Look here. About 80,000 acres of the richest soil in England. But but aren't there people on it? Yes, farms, villages, even a factory town, with hundreds of workmen's cottages. Is this thing legal? Perfectly. Of course, it'll drag on through the courts. Just a moment. The people on this land, they put their money into it, their life work. It's their homes I'll be taking. Yes. 
Do you think I'm going to kick these people out? Same homes you let poor little Sally throw away a fortune. My dear fellow, I had nothing to do with it. The girl, more power to her, acted on her own. Mm, grand gesture, one she may regret. I don't think so, Watson. There's a new spirit abroad in the land. The old days of grab and greed are on their way out. We're beginning to think of what we owe the other fellow, not just what we're compelled to give him. The time's coming, Watson. Well, we shan't be able to fill our bellies in comfort while other folk go hungry, or sleep in warm beds while others shiver in the cold. And well, we shan't be able to kneel and thank God for blessings before our shining altars, while men anywhere are kneeling in either physical or spiritual subjection. You may be right, Holmes. I hope you are. And God willing, we'll live to see that day, Watson. <laughs>